Hi guys, welcome to this edition of Beauty and the Beat. As usual, I've got my friend and bestie with me, Chandra Lynn. So good to see you. I'm excited for today's show. Yeah, I'm excited too, because I've got someone who's very close and dear to me, Garth Chan, on the show. She's a energy healer, and she does all types of energy healing, and it's so great to have her on the show. I mean, Garth has studied and is certified in various energy healing modalities. She does Chinese energy healing, Kundalini energy healing, Kundalini activation, DNA theta healing, aroma touch, energetics, Akashic records, quantum touch, fifth dimensional quantum healing, pranic healing, the emotional code, star magic healing, reconnection healing, and several, several other modalities. And, um, Chandra, what do you think about that? Lots of healing. <laughs> I, I, well, I definitely need more healing in my life. And so meeting a healer, especially when endorsed by you, is really exciting for me. And I don't even know what half that stuff is. So I'm really excited to learn about that today. Well, you got enough said. Let's get Gaz on. Hi, Gaz. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Thank you for having me. You both look beautiful. Oh, same. <laughs> We're going to create some good energy today, aren't we? I can tell. Yeah. Lots of healing, lots of energy. We're ready for this right now. <laughs> oh, good. And Amanda so, uh, introduced you and, and gave us a long list of your experience and what you offer, and it's it's unbelievable. I mean, some of those things I, I said I didn't even know what that was. I cannot wait to learn more about it. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and just kind of what you think you, know, you want to make sure to get across in the show today. Sometimes it's good to just get it out up front, and then it'll – It'll kick us off. Okay. Um, well, my name is Gaz Chan, and I live in Los Angeles. I'm originally from England, and I've been in Los Angeles for 18 years. I originally came out to pursue acting, which happened for a few years, but then the universe decided that that wasn't the real reason why I'm here. The real reason why I'm here is to study energy healing, and I have been doing this for 13 years. 13 years is a long time to build up expertise. And I understand that you're also a teacher. So for people who are interested in learning how to um, you know, magnify their own gifts, it sounds like you have some workshops and some things you offer. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I teach at Alchemist's Arts Healing and I teach various modalities so there's something for everyone so i teach psychic mediumship so that people can speak to their loved ones who have crossed over i teach astral projections so that people can uh, leave their bodies and go wandering different galaxies <clears throat> i teach energy healing quantum jumping or reading all kinds of stuff so guys um one thing i always like asking is how did you get here like you know how did you learn about healing like you know like did you just wake up one morning and think i'm gonna be a healer no more acting or how did you start this journey um well going way back my granddad uh, was a healer in a way he would heal my pains with a touch of his palm and i just thought that it was normal for people to do that but I had no interest in learning it myself. It wasn't until my son was maybe a year old and he got sick quite a lot back to back that I contacted a healer that I knew in LA who put me in touch with his master who happens to be a grandmaster in Shaolin martial arts and energy healing. And this grandmaster worked on my son. Well, he actually worked on me and my husband at the time. But the next day, my son was well. He invited me to a lecture at the Bodhi Tree Bookshop. And I went along and I saw him do Jedi Knight tricks on the audience. So afterwards, I approached him to acknowledge him. And he kind of just shrugged it off and said, oh, it's easy. You know, you can do this. You know, you should come and do my workshop. And I was a bit taken aback. I didn't want to do it. So my mum was visiting at the time. So I went back and I told her and I said, you know, everyone says that you have a healing energy, that you are a healer. 
you're retired, you have time, why don't you take the workshop? And my mom, being a very smart lady, said, well, your birthday's coming up. Why don't I gift you the workshop as a birthday gift and then you can learn it and work on your son? And at the time, I didn't think it was a great gift. <laughs> <laughs> but I went <laughs> and was convinced. I was like, what, what am I doing here? I don't want to do this. I can't do this stuff. But then within a, an hour, I was clearing like past life traumas. So, and it hasn't stopped since. Wow, that is amazing. And I, I want to make sure that I'm understanding the breadth of what you're able to offer in terms of the healing work. I mean, uh, uh, the there was a long list of methodologies that you that you are knowledgeable about, but in terms of attracting clients or people that might need your help, what can they expect from you in terms of uh, what what they can come to you for? Is it mainly physical? Is it, um, are there, you know, we we've talked about energy blocks, uh, Amanda and I in the past. I'm just curious, what, what all can be healed? Anything, everything. People come to see me for all kinds of different reasons. Some people come to see me because of sexual trauma or physical abuse anxiety, depression. Some people come see me because <clears throat> they have relationship blockages or they want to meet their life partner. Some people come because they have career blockages and they feel like they're being held back and they don't know why or they just feel blocked. As some people come see me for physical issues. Some people have even asked me to clear things around them selling their homes. So all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. So guys, so it's like, if someone comes to see you, how do you decide what modality to use? Because I know every single time, you know, someone comes and then they tell you, I have this problem or I have that problem. What makes you think that, okay, this is what I'm going to use on this person and this is how mm -hmm. it's going to work? Mm -hmm. Rather than going from modality to modality to modality, I kind of just fuse them all together because every modality has its strengths and weaknesses. So that's why it's important to learn as many as you can. And so at this point, I just drop into the energy field and trust whatever information comes up. Sometimes I'll see things, sometimes I'll feel things, sometimes I hear things and I, I just can sense it. That's very interesting. So um, if I like, you know, because it's all has to do with energy. If I asked you three things that everyone should be doing in order to keep some sort of balance in their energetic field and, you know, to kind of make sure they're not having too much negative energy going on around, what would you say? Hmm. Well, the first thing to do is to spend time in nature, whether it be sitting in the park on a beach, hugging a tree, uh, spending time in the forest, um, just sitting in the garden, right? Earthing, grounding, spending 20 minutes walking barefoot on the ground, on the earth to absorb the earth's electrons. That's very healing. So spending time in nature would be my first go-to. And then my second go-to is meditation. And I know some people find it difficult to meditate, but you don't have to meditate in silence. You can meditate with binaural beats on. You can do a guided meditation. Uh, you know, you can wash the dishes and do and be in a be in a meditation. You can do a walking meditation. It doesn't have to be sit there in silence and empty your mind. And the third thing is get rid of toxic people and situations in your life. Those are all pretty powerful. I, I definitely believe in, in everything you just said. You know, I, I have, I spend daily time with, in nature, you know, going on hikes and getting out and, and I've used the same, same advice. Um, what's really intriguing about what you said too is the, is the clearing of toxic people. I think that um, a lot of us have had a challenging 2020 and have decided not to continue some relationships in 2021, you know, not bringing those things in and continuing the stress because there's already enough external stress. But I know that it, it takes conditioning new patterns 
friends because, you know, there's value, there has been value in those relationships and it's, it's hard to let go. And so there can be a lot of grief and things around that. Um, is there any advice that you have around, you know, managing grief and loss? Well, it's a process, but so something that I recommend to my clients and students is to write down a requirement list. What do you require from your friends? Mm -hmm. You don't want to focus on the positive, not the negative. So you wouldn't say, I don't want a lying, cheating, backstabbing, <laughs> you know, uh, jealous friend. You, you wouldn't say that. You would say, I require that my friends are kind and supportive and generous and loving and they accept me for who I am and they love me unconditionally, right? So it's really important to write down a requirement list because when you write down a requirement list, you are increasing the probability and possibility of it happening. Also, when someone comes into your life, you know instantly, immediately, this person does or does not fulfill my requirements, right? And then to, to do the grief, it's it's very, it's some, sometimes we attract people in our lives to hold us back. So if you have a lot of toxic people in your life, how have you called in those people to hold you back, to keep you invisible, to keep you small? So you have to take responsibility for attracting the people that you've attracted, right? And then the other thing is just sit with the idea. How does it feel for me in my body when this person is in my life? Notice the tension, notice the emotions, anxiety, fear, frustration. And then sit the idea, how does it feel to not have this person in my life? Is there an expansion in myself? Did the tension immediately leave? Do I feel at peace? Do I feel harmonious? And then, then you have your answer. That is I think really you're just giving us some coaching right there. That's like mm -hmm. some... <laughs> So, I just want to say, if you have been raised on junk food your entire life, right, a lot of people have, then you're going to want junk food. If you have been abused throughout your life, you're going to look for abuse. So, you have to be patient with yourself and acknowledge that this is a healing journey. And the more you heal, the healthier your relationships will be. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, the healing process is really interesting. And I know that you you have a couple things to share about that regarding life lessons. What would you say as far as like, what does it take to actually heal? Is it enough to bring in a, an energy worker and and try to remove blocks or are there things that you have to actively do in order to um, take those lessons and and have them transform you know and and heal yourself for, for your next relationships well you get to ask yourself what are my lessons in this relationship what was the lesson from this relationship because if we don't resolve or learn our lessons we just keep repeating the same patterns right? So yes, a healer can come in or a psychiatrist or a therapist can come in and help you understand, you know, why I've been attracting these relationships, but you have to ask yourself, what is my need? What is it that I'm needing from these relationships? Do I need to feel bad about myself? Do I need someone to hold me back? Do I need to stay small and invisible? And what is it that I'm learning, right? So for example, my father was a violent alcoholic, but I learned forgiveness. Yeah. So what are you learning from that relationship? Mm. Very, very profound, very, and it's very important. You know, I like what you said about, you know, the simple thing of just, closing your eyes when you know someone's around you that you don't feel and think to yourself how do i feel how does that person make me feel in this situation and then you know when you think about when they're not there 
does that release the tension, you know? Because your answers are right there. You know, there's so many people that, you know, we all have that, you know, you're either going to see them or they're coming to visit you and you're like, oh, I really don't want to go. I really don't want to see that person. Yet you're still there smiling, pretending like everything's all right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't make you feel good. No, and it's a huge disservice to everyone because you're being inauthentic. Mm. And so, you know, when you're being inauthentic and you're not being honest and you're not being genuine, you're not valuing your truth, you know, it will show up everywhere in your life, right? And then you're not also, you're also not allowing the other people, the other person to be authentic and genuine or transparent either. So yeah. it's, a, it's you're not doing anyone a, a good service. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you there because 2020 for me was a year where I got rid of a lot of people. Some people I thought were my good friends. Some people I thought were lifelong friends. But it, I did exactly what you said, Gars. I kind of looked at our relationship. I looked at what the basis of the relationship was, how much I was giving and not getting back, what they were doing to me. And a lot of things they had done to me in the past that I'd let go, which I realized were very, very deceitful, wicked things, but I kind of let it go. And, um, you know, some of them I had to cut out of my life. And an example of this, which I'm gonna say on the show is, um, I was almost raped by a producer here in Hollywood. And I told a friend of mine who at the time was my roommate, right? And, you know, I told her in passing and she, she didn't even know this guy, but like a year, two years later, she became his bestie and she became his best friend, like a very good friend of his. And she's like, oh, you know, because he's an important producer, she kind of thought he was going to help her. Obviously, he never did. But, you know, I kind of continued my friendship with her because I was like, I mean, I didn't know, like they were, the, they had their own friendship. But then years later, just like last year, I had to confront her because she was like, and I said, listen, you say you're my friend. I told you what happened with this person. And then it's not like you were his friend before. You then use that opportunity to try and go become his friend because mm -hmm. you thought this person could help you. Um, you know, fortunately for me, I wasn't raped or anything because I, I was able to handle myself. But, you know, the fact that I still kept on being friends with this girl, even after what she did, because I was trying to see the good in her. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that, no, she's not a good person because she's just fighting for herself and what she can get out of every situation. So I had to let her go. And I must tell you, the moment I let her go, even just as a friend, my life started moving on. Yeah. Um, also in those situations, there is a betrayal, not just from her to you, but your own betrayal to yourself, right? So there is a forgiveness process that you get to go through. Like I'm going to forgive myself for keeping this person in my life who did not have my best interests at heart. Right? So there's something that you got out of that relationship or you were fearful of letting go of that relationship for some reason. Probably abandonment issues there, right? Yeah, or just trying to, I think all my life, that's one thing I've always done. I always try to see the best out of everyone. So even when they're stabbing you in the back, you're like, yeah, but that person's such a good person. You know, I'm sure they, you know, they went through, they've gone through this in their life and they've gone through that and, you know, they, they mean well. But one thing I've realized is it's not my responsibility for their life. My responsibility is for my life here so if they're doing screwed up things it's not my responsibility to be accountable for them my responsibility is to be accountable for me yeah and that's a very difficult you know thing you know because obviously it might as you said guards it might have to do with abandonment issues it might have to do with just the fact that you know growing up with a abusive father kind of like your story so it's like you kind of get used to the abuse. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, most people were raised in a somewhat abusive household or they mm -hmm. have a parent or step parent or sibling or cousin or whatever it is. So we get conditioned into accepting the abuse and we don't stand up for ourselves 
and we were never rescued. We were never told, hey, what you're going through is not okay. So we for well, we don't forgive really. We just, we let a lot of things slide. We let a lot of things go, you know. But I feel like we're aging out of that time now. We're, we're aging out of like, it's not okay to be racist. It's not okay to be, uh, you know, sexually inappropriate with women. A lot of things are not okay now. We're not accepting these things. So I feel like more and more we're becoming healthier as a whole. Do you feel like we're heading into an age of authenticity? I well, that's an that's interesting point of view. Um, I see myself in a generation where we kept journals and everything was private. And there are a lot of things that you didn't share. And there's a lot of shame um, around what was happening in the household. And you didn't want anyone reading your journal. But because of social media, everything's really transparent now. Everyone's talking about their abuse. Everyone's sharing, you know, uh, their anxiety, their depression. It, we've moved into an age of transparency. You know, a lot of people are talking about things that we never talked about when I was growing up. So I feel like it's a very, very different age. It's a very different era. And it's a, it's a completely different generation also. Mm. I have a question about the healing work that, that you do as far as this digital landscape. Are you able to offer healing services uh, via you know um, a Zoom call or something like that? Or do you feel like being in person is really important? All my sessions are over Zoom and well now, but they weren't like maybe over a year ago. I, I was seeing people remotely and I was seeing people in person. Uh, I'd say 70% of my clients were okay with moving over to Zoom or Skype or FaceTime. And then the 30% were like, I really want to see you in person. I need to see you in person. But to me, it doesn't make a difference. Okay. But some people, they just want to be in your energy field. They just instantly feel calmer or more relaxed or more grounded in your energy field. And I can appreciate that. Yeah, I, I've always wondered that because I, you know, my some of my friends talk about going to psychics and they may talk to them over the phone and the psychic might may only somehow they're able to feel the energy, even though they're just over the phone or over Zoom. And I'm curious about that in, and, you know, how how that happens, because, you know, if, um, for example, one psychic I know of is able to to uh, feel a lot just by saying your full name. And when, when they, it was something about hearing your full name, they're able to download a lot of information and, um, and be able to actually see into the future. You know, what do you think is going on there energetically? And it doesn't seem to matter to have the, the um, distance between you with the digital technologies. Well, the distance belongs into, it belongs in the 3D realm, right? Where there is separation. But when you're on the phone to your friend or just like here, you can tell if someone's upset. You can tell if someone's angry. You can tell if someone's defensive. You can tell if someone's holding back, right? So when you're on the phone talking to your friend, you know exactly how she or he feels. You know when someone's lying. Your consciousness knows these things before you, you can see them with the physical eye, right? 70% of our communication is energetic. There's a lot of information that you can get from dropping into someone's energy rather than speaking verbally. Because when we open our mouths and speak verbally, people lie. Hmm. We put across what we want to put across. There is a barrier actually when we speak verbally. I need you to see me the way I want you to see me. I'll give you the information that I want to give you. It's all very selective. But when you drop into someone's energy field, all the information is there. Hmm. That is so interesting. So it can happen over the phone. It can happen online. And, and uh, for you personally, is it seeing the person? Is it hearing the person? Is it just, can you do it whether you're even connected? 
you don't need to see the person. You don't need to hear the person. That's really for the client. You, know? you don't even need to know someone's name. You just set the intention. I'm just going to drop into this person's energy field and see what comes up. Mm -hmm. And you just learn to trust so that. I said it's all about energy. So because energy travels and it can travel countries or miles away. So someone can be in um, Russia right now and you can do a healing with them or a... Yes, yes. You can absolutely tune into it anything you can tune into a person an animal a plant a location a building halfway across the world yes hmm. i'm kind of excited i want to learn some of these skills i am definitely going to sign up for one of your workshops i think there's so next workshop. right let's go to one of our workshops we'll see yeah, how many like we'll see how, how many beautiful like that when is the, the next workshop oh yeah well, I'm going to be reshooting an online workshop at the uh, end of April. And I'm going to get that edited and then put that out for those who have full-time jobs, who aren't in the same time zone as me, or who have uh, uh, children. And then after that, I will create a seven-day Zoom workshop, live Zoom workshop. What's the best so, way that they can hear about that? Is there, do you have a website or is there a place where they can subscribe to a newsletter? They can go to alchemistsartshealing.com and they can subscribe to the newsletter and they'll be notified of upcoming events. I also post on social media on Facebook and Instagram. So Facebook, they can look up alchemistsartshealing.com, uh, alchemistsarthealing or they can follow me on Instagram at Gars Chan. Oh, great. Yeah, we'll be sharing that information um, in our posts as yeah. well. I, I think there's actually a lot of viewers who are interested in creating their own content and learning how to do that. So maybe we can have another show eventually about how to, um, to launch your... We, we all have wisdom, right? We all have skills and knowledge and being able to turn that into something that can help people with with their lives or with their careers, I think is really powerful. We don't always need to offer everything as a service we can or a product. We can, you know, in a way productize our knowledge and be able to put it out there and help people with reach so many more people, right? Than we would be able to one on one. Yeah. So that said, Gaz, you know, I mean, it's always a pleasure having you on the show and taking time to come on. And as she said, you can find her at info at ChineseEnergyHealing.com or you can go to ChineseEnergyHealing.com to see all the stuff and her social media handles. So I'm going to put up her social media handles one more time so everyone can see them. And they're there. You can find her at Gaz Chan or at Chinese Energy Healing on Facebook. So, Gaz, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. So nice to meet you. And I know, and I, I'm sure the audience feels that we have only scratched the surface with you. There's so many different layers and dimensions that we could talk about for healing. So we hope that you join us for another show in the future. I would oh, yeah, to. definitely, definitely. And I must say, guys, guys is an amazing healer. She's helped me just doing a few healings, a few activations here and there. And I'm living testimony to it. So if you're going through anything in your life, please contact her at info at ChineseEnergyHealing.com. Thank you very much for tuning in to Beauty and the Beat. Bye. Oh,